I am Kathy Neifeld, one of the principals at Agency One. On behalf of my partners and our amazing Agency One team, I am thrilled to welcome everyone to our bi-weekly webinar series. This is the ninth webinar that we have hosted this year, and all of the webinars, with the exception of one, have been recorded and can, can be found on either the Agency One website or on our YouTube channel. If you are looking for information on asset protection and estate income and gift tax planning under President Biden's administration, digital marketing tools, strategies, and resources that you should be using to help drive more business, a premium financing update, underwriting information, a current economic update, or perhaps are interested in an industry perspective from the president and CEO of John Hancock Life Insurance Company, I encourage you to access these webinars. The speakers are renowned industry experts and have included nationally recognized estate planning attorney, Alan Brown, and advanced markets consultant, Randy Zipsy, digital marketing expert, Samantha Russell, the senior vice president and national director for premium financing at US Bank, Taylor Miller, economist, Anir Banbasu, Brooks Hingle, the president and CEO of John Hancock Life Insurance Company, our very own superstar underwriting team led by my partner, Dennis Bartos, and others. So please be sure to access those webinars. For those of you that are new to Agency One, a brief introduction. We are a very high touch, exclusive BGA. Exclusive, what does that mean? We have a platform called the Agency One 100, and one of our guiding principles is to work with a small, select group of advisors in a very large way. The advisors that are part of this group are like-minded, highly successful, creative, and driven. We focus on life insurance and fixed annuities. If you have other needs, like disability insurance or life settlements or standalone long-term care insurance, we have strategic relationships with the best providers in the industry to refer you to. We truly have the premier underwriting department in the industry, led by my partner, Dennis Bartos, and advanced markets and case design departments, led by my partner, Gonzalo Garcia. If you want high touch, personalized attention, advocacy, and want to feel like you and your cases are important, an agency one is or should be your BGA. If you would like to learn more about us, the Agency One 100 platform, and how you can become a part of it, or if you have a case you would like to discuss, please re reach out to us. I have some additional important announcements about what Agency One has planned for the next few weeks, and I will be sharing them with you at the end of the webinar. Now on to today's webinar planning opportunities using whole life insurance. We are thrilled to have representatives from four very highly regarded life insurance carriers that have whole life products joining us today. You are going to hear from brand new father to little baby girl, Lena Marie, Tom Connolly, who is the regional vice president with Lafayette Life. You're also going to hear from Corey Moore, a regional marketing specialist with Penn Mutual and the proud father to a Shiba Inu named Yoshi. We're also going to be joined by Rick Blazer, who's a corporate vice president in the advanced markets department with New York Life. And Rick is the father to two fabulous cats that his family acquired during COVID named Pinto and Otter. And then we're also thrilled to have John Cook, a uh, vice president in the national marketing offices for security mutual life joining us as well. And John is a proud father to his, his Tibetan terrier named Winnie. Ed Stark, Agency One's Vice President of Case Design, is going to moderate this presentation. The speakers will try to respond to any questions that have been asked at the end of the presentation. So please submit your questions through the question or chat feature at the bottom of the screen, and we will be monitoring them as they are submitted. This session is being recorded. I now turn this session over to Ed Stark. All right, thanks, Kathy. 
Hey, first, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time today to dial into our webinar. And basically, it's based on our whole life uh, portfolio. Um, again, my name is Ed Stark. Um, I'm in charge of the case design team here at Agency One, and I'll be the moderator for the panel today. Um, each of the reps that Kathy mentioned are going to receive some time to discuss how their product or products can be used to creatively design certain scenarios or things that may be a little bit different than what you may have seen with whole life in the past. Um, new ways to sell the product and what they can bring to the table. Before we start out, I wanted to take a brief moment to say a few things about whole life insurance and why this webinar will be helpful. First, this is a product that you've probably sold at one time or another during your career. Um, and, you know, a lot of people said I started with whole life or I still sell whole life primarily, but it's something that you know some people do focus on primarily. So let's look at the fact that they have strong cash values, guaranteed cash values, they use dividends for their performance. Um, and it's just a little bit different. And something that you know people may have forgotten about or may have thought that they may not have been as competitive as it is right now. If you think that that product's out of date, if whole life is out of date, you'd be surprised to know this fact that I pulled off the Limmer website. Basically the fact is that whole life new premium and policy count rose about 7% in the third quarter of 2020. Seven out of those 10 carriers, these are the top 10 carriers in the whole life market reported positive growth in the first three quarters. And basically whole life premium accounted for about 35% of the total life insurance market in that third quarter. So it is something that's being sold. It's something that people are looking at and it's being designed and used in a lot of different situations. What I don't have is the stat of the total amount of whole life premium dollars sold. Um, I also know that Agency One didn't sell every single whole life policy in the market last year, so I can't talk about that either. Um, but I want to know, let you know that I quote it daily on almost every case, or at least sometimes throughout the day, I run a whole life quote, and it's for a ton of different reasons. So, you know, you can mix it, you can use it by itself, you can use it with another product, you can use it in a bunch of different sales. Um, and this is something that you're going to hear about throughout this presentation today, the way it can be used creatively. And it's not just a paid of 100 and maybe it'll vanish down the road. That's you know not what this call is going to be about. So without further delay, let's start with our, further, our first panel guest, Tom Connolly. Tom? All right. Well, Ed, Kathy, I want to uh, first thank you guys for having us on the call today. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to speak to your, your advisors here and uh, hope, hope we get some good uh, feedback here. But uh, just to get started real quick as a, a high-level overview of Lafayette Life, um, we are a highly rated company uh, backed by the Western Southern Financial Group. Uh, if you're familiar with them, we are kind of like a mini Berkshire Hathaway. We own multiple insurance companies as well as other asset management companies. Um, but again, I think our story is a 100-plus-year-old company, uh, Western Southern being a, a mutual holding company, uh, and direct access to, um, to ourselves, our team, our underwriters, new business, uh, the whole nine yards as it comes to to writing life businesses. We know it's a challenge. Uh, you get that access to our company. So that's important to know as uh, you, know, you continue on the Lafayette life story. Um, and again, I can take other questions later about the company too. But just to kind of give a high level overview of what I want to talk about for these few minutes, uh, just kind of go through what makes Lafayette life unique. And if you haven't looked at us in the past or you heard about us, um, I just kind of share with you where we might differ from not other whole life companies, but also too how we can compete in the other markets when it comes to the, the, the IUL illustrations, right? And how we are unique and how we can design a whole life policies. So you'll see here, uh, based on this screen, we have six different whole life options to choose from. So we do have a wide, a diverse product portfolio. Uh, we are a non-direct recognition company. Um, and again, with dividend paying as well too. Uh, holding our dividend from last year, which is a great sign uh, in, in a year where a lot of companies did reduce dividends. So when it comes to our, our product suite, I'd say where we are unique is that we can do some very detailed oriented design of policies. Uh, we have some very flexible paid up addition riders, which I encourage you to take a look at on our end, how we, where we can design policies to continue to perform uh, not just long-term, but also provide the client that cash value early on that they may not get in another type of policy uh, when it comes to permanent life insurance. So that's kind of where Lafayette Life is unique um, in our design and the flexibility to create different policies and structures. So that's one thing to keep in mind too. And, and as we continue on, that's uh, one thing we can always show illustrations too. 
I want to go through a couple just unique strategies that we do have that might pertain more to this group. Um, obviously, we have the th our three high cash value policies that are great long term performers that we can mix into any type of market when it comes to supplemental retirement planning, um, banking policies, we can use them. But I do want to touch on three other policies that you may not, you may not be familiar with or you're looking for maybe another option that needs to be replaced today in the market. So I want to talk about our, our 10 pay life, which is I, th I think one of the, one of our strongest products when it comes to true 10 pay. I know it's, a, I know it's an attractive market right now. Um, we can still do this as a non mech. So I know some companies have changes where, where they come in mech. So we do have the ability to still keep that 10 pay on a non mech basis. So that's huge. One thing to keep in mind there. Um, and typically it's fully, by the time it's paid up in the 10th year, you're, you're pretty much cash on cash and you have that, that thing just continues to grow. So that's one, one unique aspect. And again, uh, our single pay, which is our Liberty product you see there on the right, that's a single premium whole life product. So, you know, I I'm sure all of you have seen single premiums in the past. Um, I know we're seeing a lot more of that on an IUL chassis, but it's one that I get a lot of questions on. A lot of people are looking for homes when it comes to single premium uh, whole life insurance. And what makes ours so unique is the fact that it is one, very liquid. So we can almost have that fully liquid by the end of the second, third year um, to the point where in that year one, year 90 to 95, 96% cash value. So it works really well with legacy play, wealth transfers. Um, clients are gonna get better yield somewhere with their safe money. It does include a chronic illness benefit as well too. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind that we can do with this is we can take up to $3 million on a, on a lump sum. So again, a lot of ability to dump in large amounts of cash uh, for your clients who are, who are looking for repositioning, whether it's estate planning or, or legacy place. So that's our 10 pay, our, our Liberty single premium. And then lastly, I want to talk about our heritage product, We're pretty unique uh, in the market. I know a lot of you probably here look at GUL sometimes for kind of using it as a, a death benefit play for wealth transfer as well. Our heritage is probably as close as you're going to get to a GUL alternative on a whole life chassis. You're going to get great guarantees. You're going to get good guaranteed cash value as well. Um, what I love about the, the heritage product compared to some other GULs out there, I know some GULs now have a return of premium feature, but um, it gives you some, some outs, right? It gives you the ability to either reduce path to policy at some point in time with the, with the cash value on hand, um, or it does allow for you to, to walk away and take that cash where in some scenarios of a GUL, you might not have that ability. So it's just a nice alternative. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than your true GULs, but it's going to work and feel just like that um, with some potentially better guarantees in the cash value side of things. So again, those are our three, uh, three different ideas to kind of share with you today. And again, three other products that we have are all kind of similar and they're all more cash value scenarios. Um, and they're probably more of our more popular products. But just know that, again, if it does come to those scenarios and, and you're using... Uh, life insurance for supplement retirement planning or volatility buffers, uh, we can definitely play very well in that market. Um, yeah, Tom, that's actually something that, that we've seen quite a bit of is that sort of those products being used for those sort of comparisons to, you know, seven to 10 pay even or five to seven pay using that overfunding it. Do you have like a ratio with your paid up additions, like how much paid up additions rider or you could put into yeah, something so like that? Yeah, we do a lot of blends when it comes to our paid up additions, right? Like for example, our Patriot product, which you see there right in the middle, is probably our most popular scenario. We see it for supplemental retirement. We see it for banking strategies as well too. Um, I would say, look, we, we can get very creative when it comes to design okay. paid up additions, right? I see anywhere from a, you know, all base policy to where you're blending it uh, 80% into the PUA and 20% to the base, right? So that's going to give the client roughly... 94 cents of every dollar goes into our paid up additions is going right to the cash value. So from a, a cash strong policy, um, you know, it's almost like a true minimum non mech on an IUL. It's just how much PUA you're going to put into that policy on a blend, right? But we can go up to a really a 90, 10, okay. there's a 99, one split, right? If we, if we really right. have. I haven't seen that one, but I have seen the fact that you can put some decent PUAs in there, make it look yeah. really good. Um, and again, I've also, like you mentioned, the single pay, we've used that single pay product, you know, since we've gotten access to it quite a bit. So yeah, it's, it's a great alternative. Yeah. But I'd say on average, our, our, our typical strategy is probably a, anywhere from a 50, 50 blend 
to a 75, 25, depending upon the scenario, right? Because sometimes you need to have enough base in there to be right. able to have these policies designed, right? A lot of times we do use term riders as well, too. And yeah, that, there's not a one size kind of fits all. Yeah, design. because again, the term rider allows for you to have that ability to dump in more money into these policies as well. So, which will be interesting with 7702 coming into fruition next year, probably where we see new, some new product rollout because we know that the MET corridors are changing where we can put more money into these things. So, We'll be interested to see how that all that plays out and how much more we can get into these policies on a non-MEC. Um, but again, that's that's that is one of our, I'd say, unique structures and designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you guys allow um, a reduced paid-up option? We do. So that's another flexible piece as well. All of our products you can reduce pay-up really at any point in time, assuming there's enough cash value on hand. Uh, we do see that a lot in scenarios where we are using it for income streams in the back end. When you do reduce pay the policy, it just seems to be works a lot more efficiently, right? Um, kind of like a increasing death benefit change to a level death benefit, right? To a one. right. So a very in that scenario. Um, so we, we do have that ability, right? Even though our Patriot pays age seventy five, you can reduce pay it up at say sixty five and and take income when you feel like. It. So a lot of flexibility when it comes to that also. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, that's something that it does improve the illustration or sometimes it, it doesn't, it takes away the fact you can't pay later or did add extra premium or anything like that. So you have to be careful when you do do that. Premium offset, premium offset as well too, or the vanishing premium. So we have some flexibility there, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's our unique. Okay, great. And just one last thing I'm just kind of, I was curious about when you mentioned 7702, have you guys decided, are, are you waiting until like maybe the end of the year or for fourth quarter? Do you have like a timeline yeah, or something I mean, you talked about? Uh, we'll probably see some changes here. We're shooting for fourth quarter, but I've heard some of the other, other names have asked for an extension to sometime next year. So we're not, we're really not sure. It's, it's been yeah. pushed back. Every yeah. It's funny because it happened the first of the year and everyone kind of assumed it was going to happen like right after, but it takes time to come out with a product. Yeah, file products across all the states. And we just right. refiled a couple of years ago too, so. Yeah, and do it right. So, no, that's cool. All right, well, great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right, so we are going to go here. Do you need anything on this slide before we wrap it up? No, this is good. This is just a, a rider's piece. I forgot that was on okay. there. So let's all right. be good there. Okay. All right, great. All right, thanks, Tom. All right, uh, you, so Ed. next we have Rick from New York Life. Rick Blazer. Yeah, how are you? Doing well, Rick. How's it going? Good, thanks for the opportunity to be here today and thanks for um, Agency One, the, the whole team for letting us uh, get on the platform today. Yeah, welcome. I'm gonna take a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about New York Life on the brokerage side, what we do, what we offer, and then talk about what's selling in that space and kind of where the high points are um, for purposes of this call. So. Um, First is, you, I mean, everyone probably knows New York Life as a company. <laughs> They're and primarily we're a career company. I think the lion's share of the business at New York Life is a is a career uh, generated premium business. But the brokerage business has been around for about 20 years at New York Life, a little more than 20, almost 30 now. Uh, in the brokerage side, and, and on the brokerage side, we're really a boutique. Strangely enough, a boutique business in the sense that there's a twenty thousand dollar minimum premium. So we're not really writing day to day small cases on the brokerage side. But given our financial strength and some of the things that we offer in the brokerage space, we do see very large premium cases and, and um, either high death benefits or high premium cases in the brokerage space. And I mentioned that because that's really kind of our, our target market here. So it is relevant to talk a little bit about financials because I think if most carriers went out and tried a strategy where they said, hey, we're going to go into brokerage, but we're only going to take cases that are $20,000 of premium or more they probably fail pretty miserably, but the reality is that our financials are, I think, superior or, or second to none in the marketplace. And that helps drive those bigger cases uh, to us. So, um, and I think that there's this kind of evolving flight to quality that we've seen. I'm not gonna name names, but there was another carrier just recently over the last couple of weeks that um, had some issues and then was eventually sold. And so I think when you look at a, a whole life product in particular, unlike some of the other products in the marketplace, you're really buying the carrier because ultimately the guarantees are what they are. And then the long-term performance is going to be based on the performance of that, of that carrier. So anybody can put anything down on a piece of paper with respect to an illustration and point that out. But the reality is, um, how is the company going to be able to support that? So we announced our financials about three weeks ago, I believe. And um, obviously we announced the dividend last year. We, we were paying $1.8 billion in dividend last year. But our reserves were released a couple of weeks ago. 
We have $27 billion of reserves and we grow our assets under management business to $702 billion. And why that's important is because um, some of our competitors and others out there um, have used that strategy to bolster dividends over the last umpteen years with using business assets from other places. So when you think of a, a mutual company like a New York Life, and I'll point out our dividend history. In 2012, our dividend interest rate was 5.8. And our dividend interest rate today is 5.8. It's been up as high as 6.2 at various points over the last 10 years. But 10 years ago, it was 5.8. Today, it's 5.8. So the question is really going to be, I think advisors are thinking, how does that happen? Okay, how do you have in this interest rate environment, how do you maintain a dividend of 5.8? And as a mutual company, um, obviously, interest rates are gone down. So the portfolio has pressure on it from the interest rate. So as mutual companies, there's only really three ways in which you can build yield, okay? One is going to be that you can, you can take more aggressive risk in your portfolios, which I don't think a New York Life is, is going to do. You can take from surplus, or you can invest in other businesses underneath your umbrella that drive earnings towards a dividend. And by and large, we have the ability to, to take from surplus if we need to, and we're going to use um, business, money from other businesses or earnings from those other businesses. We have 11 different businesses underneath, underneath the New York Life umbrella that are helping to drive earnings and, and revenue towards our, um, our, our effect, effectively our financials, which helps our dividend. So that I think it's important to point that out because, again, when you're looking at a whole life product, in my mind, you want to invest in that company and, and have some confidence in that company's ability to be able to perform in the long term. So you're not in a situation where a company gets sold, they cut the dividends, they they stop paying dividends, all these different things that can happen in the marketplace. So we're kind of proud of our, our financial um, uh, quality, I guess you would call it, and story there. So it's relevant to mention that in, in the picture. And, and it also helps us in the space, as I mentioned, the broker space. These are large cases. We have the highest internal retention in the marketplace right now. And so we have $40 million of single life retention up to age 60, and we have $50 million survivorship uh, through age 60, younger insured age 60. So when you think of that, that's 40 or $50 million, depending on single life survivorship, that we're taking on our own paper, right? No reinsurance. And so if you have a capacity case out there that you've worked on and you don't have New York Life in that portfolio, there's a pretty big gap out there with respect to how much insurance could actually be purchased. And we've had, um, in, in some cases, because we are boutique, some brokers don't know that we even that we're out in the brokerage space. And you'd be surprised how many cases we run into where someone has their best client and their client has a bunch of insurance already in place. And what they want to do is they want to max out the marketplace. And they didn't realize that New York Life has this kind of capacity out there and they can access it through groups like Agency One. So that's really key to, to our space. And quite frankly, right now, given where interest rates are, I just looked before this call, I think the 90 day LIBOR is hovering around 20 basis points. So when you look at uh, premium financing in particular, these large cases, whether they're mid six figures, low seven figure premiums that we're dealing with in some cases, by and large, people are financing those premiums in today's marketplace, just given where interest rates are and versus um, coming out of pocket for those premiums. So there's a um, significant need and a desire right now for premium financing. And the products we have really fit well in that space. So um, just like the prior speaker, we have a 10 pay product, um, but our product is flexible in the sense that you can pick anywhere from a five pay to age 75 with respect to when you wanna pay that up. So if some client said to you, I wanna pay for 15 years and I don't wanna take the chance that dividends are gonna go down and I'm gonna to have to pay premiums longer than I thought. I mean, everybody has some type of horror story they're familiar with of someone who bought a whole life policy in the eighties and was told they were going to be paying premiums for uh, 10 years and they're still paying them today, right? So everyone's seen those. And I think that's put a, a, a stain on the marketplace a little bit from a whole life perspective. And these limited pay products, in my mind, have eliminated that concern and really helped us um, move on to the next chapter in the whole life planning space. And we've had- hey, Rick, let me, let, me, let me kind of build on that for a second. So I guess the question would be, I, it is a product. You can do five pay, pick your sort of, deal up front. But if I was doing a level pay with you guys, do you guys go reduce paid up? Do you guys allow that? We can do reduce paid up. Um, but by and large, what we want to do is do, I think the product performs better if you pick in advance and you kind of live up that expectation. So yes, we could do a 10 pay and do reduce paid up in your eight, if that's what you wanted to. But I think ultimately your best performance is going to be to, to, to 
live out, if for lack of better terms, live out the bat, the rest sure. of the premium. Oh, yeah, no, that's always the intent, right? But I guess so. So and again, is that something that I, to to illustrate that? Can I illustrate that if I want to show the difference? You can. You can illustrate okay. that. Uh, it doesn't allow all the bells and whistles in the illustration on that, but you can see it. So if you want to show income and so forth, you can't do that on a reduced paid up basis. On an illustration, you can do it, but you can't do it on an illustrated basis. But okay. by and large, I think and this is maybe just me being a little conservative. I say, look, if a client thinks that they can pay 10 years, but is not sure they can pay 10 years, then they should probably back that down to a seven pay instead of a, a, an eight pay okay. or 10 pay. That makes sense. Better off from that perspective. Um, but, the, but the product... You, again, you can pick, and generally speaking, the shorter the pay, the better the performance. So if you're looking at a 20 pay, our 10 pay is probably going to perform better than our 20 pay right now. And it just happens where the pricing is at this point in time. Anything okay. under a 10 pay, sometimes a nine, we'll have to add a term rider on top of that. And we it's a, effectively a low cost term rider for seven years to avoid a mech. So if you wanted a $10 million base five pay, we could do that, but it may end up being 18 million with a term, you know, a term rider of 8 million for seven years, we can drop that term rider and you're left with a $10 million base okay. non mech policy. So it's kind of really nice in that regard. And, and the beauty of these products, Ed, is that when you're done paying premiums, if you look at our illustration in particular, there's a year over year IRR report, which is not really an IRR. It's really just a cash on cash, what someone earns. Because mm. I think a lot of people, when they buy whole life, if you do a policy review of that policy, my experience is people don't ask, well, what was my yield from day one when I bought this? They're looking at, okay, what did I have last year? What do I have this year? What's my turn? And so we have um, the year over years are going to roughly, let's just say for lack of or better our purposes, about, about 5%, somewhere in the low fives, high fours. Um, so think about that. When I go back to, we talked about premium financing and the fact that we're doing a bunch of that here. Um, think about that. If premium financing rates all in with the spread included are probably around 3%. And you're going to be able to yield a five in a quarter, let's say, in this interest rate environment right now. There's a significant amount of arbitrage, and if it's not a true premium finance, it's a it's a AFR loan, like a split dollar type plan. And in that case, the the rates are even lower. I think the mm. the AFR rate is long term AFR somewhere around 2.3 percent right now. So people are locking in those rates. We do have a a premium deposit account that's paying two and a half percent right now. So if you wanted to prepay all the premiums up front, you could do that. We'd lock in two and a half percent on that money. And the way that I like to talk about that is if you did a 10 pay with our product and you use a premium deposit account, you're going to pay equivalent, equivalent of nine premiums. So think of it that way. So instead of thinking of two, two and a half percent return, it's almost a 10% savings on your overall premiums. And so we're seeing some of that, um, from that standpoint, the five pay in the premium deposit account looks really good. So we see a five pay fund the product. And then maybe in year 15, we yank out the premiums and you leave their balance of the policy left. So it's kind of a zero outlay after 15 years for the client, put the money in, take it out. And again, you could finance that as well. So um, the issue okay. with the financing is, is the collateral, right? So if you, if you have the collateral and you want to use it for a premium finance, then you can do that. Um, some of the 10 pay products, if you design them as an all base design, don't have a lot of cash in the early year. So um, we're gonna be announcing shortly a, a honeymoon type rider that we can put on the product in certain circumstances, which will allow us to enhance the cash value in the first year up to a very significant amount, which will allow for premium financing at a reduced collateral exposure to the client. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, that'll be different. Okay, great. Hey, one uh, question that did pop up and I know you mentioned before using term to sort of keep a policy as a non mech but sure. do, you can use that also to blend a policy, can't you? Like in the beginning, you can blend with your product. Yeah, we can. We can blend whole life. So if you wanted to use a blended design, here's the interesting secret though, Ed, and this is what I love about the New York Life products. If you blend the product, the conventional thinking in the whole life space is the more I blend, the better the performance for the client because of more paid up additions. The way that our product is priced, and there's a number of reasons for this, but then the way our product is priced, the client is better off with an all-based design, particularly with respect to retirement income. So if you are running a 10 pay and you want to show income from 65 to 80 or whatever you want to show on the back end, 99% of the time you can get more income out of the policy on an all base design than you are on a paid up addition slash blended design. And it kind of blows producers' minds away because they're thinking, okay, I'm going to blend this to best performance. And then when they find out with New York Life, the one that works best for the client has the highest target for you. It makes it very appealing for the New York Life product to be sold in this, in this space. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that is different. Um, 
And then just the, the two quick things at the end to wrap up and then let the other speakers have their turn is we are non-direct recognition. So for those types of situations where people want to put money in, borrow it out for, for various purposes, you can do that as well. And um, and our 10 pay is also a non-MEC. Like I said, we can go down to a nine in some circumstances, but the 10 is almost always a non-MEC except in the, uh, in the juvenile space. Okay. All right, great. Okay, well, thank you very much, Rick. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right, this is our team. And we will now go to Corey at Penn Mutual. Hey, 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 how are we doing? Thanks doing for having well. us on. Um, and I just want to echo uh, Rick's sentiments about, you know, the carrier and the, you know, that you choose does matter when, when you're, you know, when you're buying into a whole life contract, you know, you really are buying a carrier and, you know, what kind of decisions those carriers make, I think, say a lot. Um, I think, do you have one slide back here? I think there was one slide before this I wanted to share. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. That one. Okay. Yep, that one right there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks for having us on. Um, you know, so our whole life product, we, we have one whole life product, uh, guaranteed whole life um, with, I mean, it's kind of like Ed and I spoke earlier, it's kind of like a Swiss army knife, really, um, where we can, we have a, a unique, um, a variety of unique and flexible design options within the product. So in terms of guaranteed paid up options, you know, we can dial in our, our guaranteed whole life product anywhere from um, a guaranteed five pay to a guaranteed paid up at 100. They could do a guaranteed paid up in 23 years, guaranteed paid up in 32 years, guaranteed paid up at 65. You know, whatever the client's heart's desires, um, we can type that in and make that happen with our um, with the guaranteed whole life product. Um, also, in order to, you know, we have an FPR blend, you know, term blend. I saw some questions popping in about the ability to blend on some prior um, prior speakers. We do have the ability to blend in term with our product. And there's really two main reasons why somebody might do that. Uh, the reason first I'm going to talk about here is that you can reduce the cost of whole life coverage, right? You can reduce the, the overall cost out of pocket to the client. Um, you know, I would say it can reduce the cost maybe by as up to as much as 30%, you know, depending on the cell that we're in, the age, risk class, uh, male, female, et cetera. And it gives the client that more affordable whole life option should they need it. Um, then we have our two flexible paid up additions riders. And these are really um, our overfunding mechanisms. Um, we have a, what we call APPUA and EPPUA, um, depending on the client's goals or needs, length of funding, how much death benefit they need up front, how much income they're really trying to pull out of the policy, what's more important to the client at what period in time, kind of depends on what paid up additions rider we use. And it just opens up that additional funding bucket for the client to throw some cash into um, should they need it. Um, moving to the middle here, uh, we do have overloan protection. Uh, it makes us a little unique in the marketplace. We're one of two carriers that offer overloan. And I could be wrong about this, but I think the other one is a paid for rider. I can't remember off the top of my head, but ours is automatically included within the whole life chassis. Um, you know, it's a rider you probably are more common that you more commonly see on a UL or an IUL chassis. Um, and it gives us an advantage, you know, as you'll see later with regard to income distributions, particularly in retirement, it really allows for us to squeeze, I guess, all the juice out of the lemon, um, I guess you could say, without fear of the policy lapsing. Uh, that's obviously most important. Um, and then we have our chronic illness rider, which is automatically included um, in the product. It's not really unique to just the whole life. I figured I would mention it here though. Um, the chronic illness rider is automatically included on all of our permanent products. Um, you know, whole life really, I mean, surprisingly enough, it really probably only makes up 45 to 50% of our sales. Um, we have a very balanced product distribution um, across all products line, product lines, whether it's GUL, IUL, um, uh, survivorship IUL, and whole life um, all combined. And whole life really does only make up 45 to 50%, um, which, which makes for, um, you know, a good balance sheet uh, on the risk side of things. So, and then, um, you know, I want to jump into page two here um, and just wanted to speak really quickly to those guaranteed paid up uh, features that we have so we can run our product. You know, I just 
pick three cells here. I think it was a guaranteed 10 pay, guaranteed 20 pay and, and guaranteed paid up at 100. And, you know, even though this probably isn't our most common design, um, which we'll jump to on the next slide a little bit later. Um, but it's good to see that, you know, in our guaranteed 10 pay, 20 pay and paid up at 100 design, um, we do rank near the top um, of cash value um, and death benefit IRR, which, which offers, you know, strong guaranteed paid up option uh, for your clients, getting the most bang for their buck. And, you know, these also, so the, the 20 pay, 10 pay still do really, really well um, uh, for the retirement distributions. So oh, increase the size of the slides. Um, oh, let me see if I can, uh, if I can do that. There we go. Better? Yeah, that looks good. To me, it looks good. <laughs> awesome, thanks. Yeah. So these are our, these are our guaranteed paid up cells. Guaranteed 10 pay, guaranteed 20 pay, guaranteed paid about 100s on the next page, I believe. Um, we do rank number one for cash value and death benefit IRR uh, long-term, I would say. you know Most of our products are focused on long-term cash accumulation. So that's why we're showing years 20 and 30 here. Um, and then if we jump ahead, you know, this is really what I wanted to speak mostly about. One more slide. Oh, maybe that got pushed to the front. Oh, oh, that one. Oh, I see. I see what happened there now. Um, yeah. Sorry about so that. This, yeah, yeah. This would be the large majority of our whole life designs. Um, and this is going to be our max funded design. So you know, your, your minimum non-MEC, minimum death benefit, we're maximizing our paid up additions. Uh, we're paid up additions rider that I spoke about earlier. We are um, blending in term as much as we can um, to give the client as much flexibility as possible during the funding periods. And we're keeping these policies on a paid up at age uh, 100 chassis. Um, you know, these products that we use these uh, quite a bit for our ret supplemental retirement designs, um, retirement income, or some type of like um, diversified retirement income sources concept, illustrated sales concept that we like to use quite a bit um, that we can illustrate for you. And by comparison, you know, these are the income figures here. Um, you know, we do utilize the reduced paid up option, which is a non forfeiture option that every whole life, uh, you know, every whole life client um, can choose to, to use whenever they need to. Um, and I think a Tom spoke to it earlier, it's just a more efficient way uh, for the client to pay up the policy um, and allows for more premiums to be allocated towards those paid up addition that paid up additions rider um, and, and builds in long term flexibility with regard to uh, the funding outlay. So just by comparison, you know, um, cash value IRR, you know, I know it's not listed here, but, you know, similarly to the guaranteed 20 pay, this is a male 40, male and female 45 paying in for 20 years at $25,000 a year. You know, the cash IRR on this, I ran this illustration prior to the call at, at age 65 is 4.17%. And by comparison, I think if we go to the last slide that we were on, on the 20 pay, it was actually, um, the 20 pay design was 3.52% and oh, the guaranteed, funnier. yeah. And the guaranteed 20 pay design, uh, go up one, go scroll up a little bit there. To this one. Yeah. Yep. Right here, 20 yeah. Pay. So the guaranteed cash value on the, uh, the guaranteed 20 or the non-guaranteed cash value on the guaranteed 20 pay was 3.52. Um, so about, you know, what, uh, 60 bips, uh, 65 bips, a little bit better using the max funded design. And you're also um, giving your clients some flexibility in regards to premium outlay during their funding period and even long term. Because remember, that reduced paid up option is totally flexible. They don't right, have and you to can, exercise that option. And that, re that reduced paid up option, you can illustrate that as well, right? Because I know I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've run yeah, it both do. ways with and without kind of the, hey, here's if you reduce it and here's if you don't. Yeah. Um, and again, some of those values are based off of the projection of what the cash is going to be. But right. it, it gives you more flexibility, basically. It does. I mean, you can go reduce paid up, you know, obviously you're done at that point. You can go premium offset and you can continue uh, making premium payments. Premium offsets also going to help, you know, if the client's concerned about preserving some of that death benefit, mm -hmm. you know, I don't like to see this death benefit drop so much. All right, well, we can go premium offset and use divs to pay those base premiums and the client can start kicking in premiums, you know, whenever they want to out of pocket, really, um, if they wanted to, um, um, afterwards. And, you know, obviously 
should probably run an enforced illustration if they do plan on continuing uh, funding. But, um, and then, you know, the last thing um, I wanted to touch on is that our, our ACE program, uh, the e-application made it extremely easy to submit business in and get things through underwriting. These types of designs um, do, do qualify. The whole life product can be submitted where we can do examless and fluidless underwriting um, up to age 65, up to seven and a half million, um, examless and fluidless potentially, right? Um, and policies can be issued in as little as 24 hours um, and can be paid really within the same week. It's been, it's been big for us lately. So um, yeah, yeah, that's what I had to share with you guys. That's a big feature. That's a big feature. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Corey. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. And now we're going to go to John. Hey, thanks, Ed. Um, appreciate you uh, inviting us to be here today and a uh, pleasure to be with everybody. Um, you know, as, uh, as uh, Kathy said earlier, I'm John Cook. I'm in the process of building distribution here nationally for Security Mutual Life. And I'd love to see each and of course, see each and every one of you uh, work with Agency One to take advantage of our opportunity for your clients. Um, I, uh, I'm obviously presenting here today with you know, three amazing uh, whole life carriers. And while I'd put us uh, in that same category as amazing and a top whole life carrier, many of you probably really have no idea who we are uh, because we don't necessarily have the same name, you know, level of name recognition, right? And um, so I'd like to take a, a little bit of uh, time here and tell you who we are and make a few comments about whole life in general. So who is Security Mutual Life? Um, well, you might be surprised to know that uh, we happen to be a 135 year old mutual company. Uh, we're based in Binghamton, New York, and uh, that's the building you actually see on the, the bottom right-hand corner of the slide there, which is from the cover of our annual letter to policyholders. Um, at last check, we ranked number 11 on the list of 33 true mutual companies left in the United States today based on assets, so that would make us uh, what I would call a mid-sized mutual company, uh, and we're in growth mode. And you might be surprised to know that, again, as of last check, we ranked uh, number 22 of all insurance carriers. So this is all companies in the country, 300 plus in the US in number of policies uh, placed. So um, we know how to write policies. Um, over that time, we've traditionally focused in the state of New York and we focused in the Northeast corridor. And we've only recently begun to expand our presence and grow sales nationally through brokerage partners like Agency One. And uh, we just came off our, our most successful sales and capital growth uh, years ever. Um, despite the obvious market challenges others have mentioned. Um, we pride ourselves on our ability to deliver top quality product, service, and underwriting, but doing so with a, a, like a boutique look and feel that many carriers um, in the industry have lost to time. And, and you should know that the team at Agency One also has been a tremendous partner for us, uh, and they were recently recognized at our President's Cabinet Awards Ceremony just a couple of weeks ago as one of our leading general agencies. Um, I'll keep my comments pretty high level, as I said, but uh, Security Mutual Life's primary focus is going to be in whole life distribution, where we've been a significant resource over the years uh, for agents in the banking and college planning markets. Um, what does that mean? It just means that our whole life products, like others have mentioned, are priced and valued for the cash accumulation and, uh, and distributions. And we'll talk a little bit more about those aspects in a second. Um, while we're here to focus on whole life, you should know that we're also competitive in other areas as well. Um, we do have contractually convertible term to age 75 with a waiver premium option um, that does carry to a whole life uh, at any time during the uh, period or age 75. Um, and, uh, and that does cover paid up additions as well. Um, and we also do have a, a current assumption UL product that uh, uh, comes in also in a survivorship form uh, that are competitive at older ages and single and short pays. Um, I'll keep that part quick because we really want to focus on whole life here. And you can contact Agency One for any more information or, or quotes there. Um, let's move to the next slide if we could, Ed. Uh, as I mentioned, um, Security Mutual Life's whole life products have been traditionally popular in what we like to call the capitalized whole life market or the banking market, you might know it as. Um, and uh, there are really, the keys to success in that market is, is a real confident promotion of the virtues of whole life. And I think all my counterparts would agree, you know, you, there's really three of them. You really need to focus on the guarantees of whole life relative to other products in the marketplace. The non-forfeiture features of whole life insurance tend to be stronger than 
uh, most other cash value products in the industry. Security Mutual Life's happens, uh, guarantee happens to be 4%. Um, certainty is another one. Certainty of a whole life company, uh, dividend provides peace of mind. Many of others have mentioned that already where other industry products tend to you know, put cash values at risk for the hope of a higher return for the client. And some, some might like that. Um, we happen to have held our dividend uh, steady for six consecutive years. And our agents like that because uh, while some carriers could be higher, you know, many more in the industry you know, have been volatile or possibly even dropping over the years, especially in the prolonged low interest rate environment. And the, uh, you know, the consistency of a dividend is what clients tend to look for when, when doing their planning with whole life insurance, um, whatever that planning might be um, because of that consistency. Um, the other point is flexibility. I think uh, a couple of my counterparts have mentioned this also, you know, there's a myth out there that whole life is inflexible. And to the contrary, you know, I, I think all my counterparts would agree that the, the whole life products can be designed and they are designed today with a great deal of flexibility in mind using a combination, as many have mentioned, base premium, paid up additions and different term riders. Um, at Security Mutual Life, we're able to show a varied stream, you know, varied streams of income in and out. We happen to offer a unique option, what's called a combo rider which allows uh, clients to vary a stream of premium payments into a whole life contract. So there, you know, typically you would have a, uh, you know, a guaranteed premium you have to pay each and every year. The combo rider allows us to vary the stream uh, instead. So that's good for anyone who's paid with bonuses, commissions, other sources of, you know, steady, but somewhat maybe unpredictable or larger sums of income that come in here and there. Um, you know, even, even something such as like an, you know, an, an expected inheritance or, or the sale of a property. Um, it allows you to put up to $250,000 annually into the contract up to the MEC limit um, until you hit that MEC limit. And, um, and it, it's very useful for flexibility. Um, by the way, for those wondering, Security Mutual Life is also a non-record recognition a whole life carrier, meaning we continue to pay dividends on the full cash surrender value, including any loan value. Our whole life product line includes, um, uh, as many have mentioned, uh, life paid up at 65, paid up at 100, paid up at 121, and then a true pay non met contract, uh, all of which can be blended. Um, they can also be designed in short pay scenarios. And uh, we do have a field limit right now of $2 million uh, on, our, on our single pays, but we have been known to take larger deposits. So if you have a client with a need, uh, please let us know. We'll, you know through agency one, we'll be happy to accommodate that for you. Um, we also offer living benefits, including a critical uh, illness rider that's coming later this year, as well as a true single premium whole life product uh, with instantaneous and full underwriting. So we're uh, going down that path as well. Um, underwriting, by the way, is a strength. And I think the folks at Agency One will be able to help you navigate uh, that process with us. Um, let's move on to the next slide, Ed. You know, I just I'm trying not to spend too much time you know, driving home the virtues of whole life. But I think it's, it's important for us to remember that you know, it, life insurance is at its core and there's got to be a need. We all get that. But, you know, compared to the other financial options in the market, it checks all the boxes for the guarantees, the flexibility and the certainty that I mentioned. And I can't say those three things enough. Um, you probably can't see this flyer too well, but the chart on the right covers all those aspects in detail. And basically what it, it shows is it it shows that it's checking all the boxes, protecting the client from that whole life does this, protects the client from risks, taxes, right, regulation. Assuming. I'm just gonna zoom in on that for you, John. Oh, awesome, thank you, Ed, appreciate it. You know, basically protects your client from risks, taxes, regulation, inflation, and depreciation, right? And what other financial vehicle gives your client that? And I once worked with a gentleman who, who put it this way. He says, whole life insurance is always untaxed, untouched, and on time. And uh, I thought that was uh, just a great succinct way of putting it. Um, and, um, you know, while the common argument of, uh, you know, premium outlay, higher premium outlay, maybe for a whole life solution versus, uh, uh, you know, other product options, um, you know, is a, is a challenge. Um, remember, the true cost is obviously the difference between that premium outlay and the cash value buildup um, and the IRR in the contract. Um, and that's paramount if a carrier, you know, obviously finds itself going to guaranteed rate and charges, which, you know, the, that's where the guarantees come, come into play, where the, you know, obviously there's a pressure on the low, you know, with low interest rates right now. Um, on carriers today, especially stock companies. And, um, you know, so if you believe in a, light, a rising interest rate environment, uh, over time, it's an opportunity to not only lock in guarantees, but also take advantage of that certainty I mentioned and, 
and potentially over deliver for your clients in the years ahead. So, um, you know, because as rates rise, arguably so will whole life dividends. So, yeah. um, you know, in business planning scenarios or, or premium financing, which we do, some have mentioned, um, or even as an alternative to term insurance in a buy sell situation, the cash value of whole life, it, it creates that immediate asset that's on the balance sheet that can be used as collateral. So, you know, not just us, but any of these carriers can do this. And it, it's just, it's a tremendous way to, uh, you know, to bring value to your client with an option yeah. like that. Hey, John, one of the things that I, I know is a niche for you guys, can you maybe discuss um, where you guys are with the defined benefit, like a cash balance, the cash balance plan? Yeah, I will actually, you know what, I'll tell you what, I, I had this one fun slide in there, but in the essence of time, I'll just skip forward and I won't mention, I won't mention it. And we'll just go right to the last slide, Ed. If oh, I you can. don't want to see it. Let's look at the slide real quick. Hold on. Yeah, we'll just go, we'll just go right to the end. It's just a cover sheet for a plan. Um, and, um, you know, so, so, you know, basically I give you some, give you some ideas on how to, you know, uh, what our company is about, um, what the, uh, you know, how you can communicate, um, you know, effectively to your clients, some of the benefits of whole life insurance. And, um, you know, in the essence of time, one of the things we also do really well as a company is our ability to write life insurance and qualified plans, um, profit sharing, pension plans, including defined benefit, cash balance, fully insured, 412E3s, um, you know, what have you. you. This is a sample plan cover that's here. Uh, it's very in-depth, uh, talks about how the plans work, um, you know, what the numbers look like, et cetera, based on, on the company that you have or the, the opportunity you have. Um, we have an entire team at Security Mutual Life that consults on, designs, and even administers these plans written on Security Mutual Life paper. It's a fee-only structure, very fair fees, industry, you know, competitively in the industry. And there is, the more important thing here, here is that there is no commission split, no commission split uh, for us to administer these plans. Um, it's fee-only. Um, it's completely turnkey. There are simplified and even guaranteed options, issue options available for the right scenarios. Um, you know, and if you're in this market, you know, please reach out to the team at Agency One and um, they'll be help, able to you know, facilitate a call with us. Um, we'd love to help you there. Right, so great. with that, you know, Ed, I'll, I'll pass it back to you and I, I thank you, you all and look forward to working okay. with as many of you as possible. Yeah. Thanks, John. Hey, uh, so one question, because I, I asked it um, everyone with that, your product, again, when you're designing that, can you do the reduced paid up options as well? Like if you have a certain funding period, you can then reduce we, it. We can. We can. Okay. Yep. And can you For illustrate that as well? Can it be illustrated? Yes. Yes, it can be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. All right. Well, awesome. Well, first, I want to thank everybody here that, that was on here and just presented. And I want to bring up a couple of the questions that we're seeing here for everybody. So I'm going to open this up to the panel a little bit. Um, one of the interesting questions I see, and I, I hear about these sort of uh, strategies, these banking strategies that are out there. Um, you know, there's different programs, there's different names for it. But um, do you guys work with those types of programs or do you have any that you, or, or all of them? I mean, can you tell me a little bit how you work with those or, or if you have certain ones that you kind of highlight? And then maybe we'll start out, I'll, we'll do it this way. Tom, why don't you uh, go first with that? Yeah, sure. Um, and I'll just answer that question as well. I saw these questions come up here. So we can also, I think the reduced paid up, we talked about it. We can illustrate that too. Any okay. given year, we can show a reduced paid up actually happening within the contract. Um, but yeah, with, with the, the banking strategy, right? Infinite banking, be your own bank, bank on yourself. Your family bank, I mean, there's so many different things these days. Yeah, I'd say we are, we're very heavily in that space for sure. Um, when it comes to banking strategy, I know some carriers are turning, kind of turning turn on that a little bit, but we definitely, that's, that's probably one area we do play pretty, pretty aggressively. Yeah, with that product suite, I could see that. I could definitely see yeah, that. Yeah, and with the PUA flexibility and being able to have that early, early cash available and, and borrowing from uh, right off the bat, essentially, you know, in the first year, I mean, we have a lot of policies that we have single premium paid up addition riders as well too, which work really well because you can still keep as a non-MEC, get money into the contract right away and still be able to back it out uh, to borrow against uh, immediately, essentially. So yeah, we're, we're very heavily in that space um, when it comes to the, the infinite banking, obviously being a non-direct recognition company always helps that too. Um, but yeah, okay. very much. Awesome, great. Rick, can I put that question out to you as well? Yeah, we, we can certainly play in that space. I think the sweet spot for our product, quite frankly, Ed, is on the distributions, long-term distribution. So we do play in that space because we're non-direct recognition. 
but there's a trade-off between long-term values for purposes of income and short-term values for purposes of that type of strategy. So right. by and large, um, although we can do it, we have bank on your bank on the benefits of whole life and some other presentations that we can, we can show the, the vast majority of the stuff that we're dealing with is income in retirement for the, for the most part, even though we have that. And certainly uh, once the money's in the policy, people can certainly take it out to use it for whatever they want. And, uh, and we're not direct recognition. So yes, the answer is yes. But the, the okay. I would tell the audience, the primary sale that we're seeing is retirement income sales. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Corey. Hey, sorry, I was having trouble getting unmuted there. Um, <clears throat> I, I kind of echo what, what Rick was saying. Um, you know, our, our product is probably primarily used for retirement distributions. It's more focused on long-term accumulation and, and pulling from that long-term. Um, does that mean people uh, don't use our product for banking on yourself? Uh, no, it doesn't, because people definitely do use our product for that. Um, you know, I know that's out there, uh, you know, we're not actively endorsing it or, or promoting it, but we know that there, we do work with advisors that, um, that have used our product or have worked with advisors that have used our product for that purpose. Um, and, but we are direct recognition. So, um, you know, I guess, um, it might not be as favorable to take loans out, especially in earlier years from our product. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much. And John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we, we, we also, like everybody said, you know, we're, we're, we're non-direct recognition. Uh, we allow money to come out as soon as there's, you know, an accumulated value. So, uh, you know, agents tend to like that and, uh, and do use it for that. And we typically do uh, attend all the, you know, large industry meetings that are around banking, uh, like Cow, Cow, Cow College, for example. Um, if anybody on the call has been to those, you know, those meetings before, just with COVID, we've backed off a little bit, you know, in the last year and a half. But okay, we're there. All right, great. All right. Um, well, I mean, those are the main questions that I see here in the in the chat. And again, there's probably more that I may hear on some future calls. And, and it's nice to work with you guys because I know I can reach out to you and ask any questions that come up and we can look at designs as they come up. Um, you know, I, I love whole life. I mean, I've liked it for a long time and it's a great way to kind of show things. I show, again, a lot of those designs that you guys talked about. And it's sometimes interesting because you know, when I first started running some of these different kind of scenarios, I didn't think it was actually possible. Like I thought you ran a 10 pay, it was a 10 pay, and then you did an income solve. I didn't know you could do these high paid up edition riders and things like that. And it's interesting to see that they still look good. So they're good options and they're out there. And it just really comes down to, you know, looking at it and what you expect out of the product. And it's not just like whole life. You know, when I first started um, I, I started in a sales field. I had a whole life. It was just a, a level pay to a hundred product. And that's all you could do and maybe hope it would vanish, but that's not what they do anymore. So, um, but again, does anyone have, have any other additional questions for our panelists? Okay. Well, I think we're good for right now. I just wanted to say thank you guys very much for taking the time and, and, and helping us out with this call. I think it's uh, been really good. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Cool. And I'm going to turn it back over to Kathy. Okay, thank you, Ed. Um, and on behalf of Agency One, I'm going to again thank all of the presenters. Uh, that was terrific. Um, okay, so what's next? On Wednesday, May 12th at three o'clock, Agency One is hosting an in-force policy monitoring webinar featuring Proformex. If your in-force book of business is not working for you, then please mark your calendars for May 12th because this is a not to be missed webinar. Those are my closing announcements for today. Again, I wanna thank all of our panelists. I would like to wish everybody a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. And as always, if you have any questions or would like additional information, please reach out to me, Gonzalo or Dennis. Once again, the presentation uh, will be available on our YouTube channel and on our website. And if you would like the slides, we will make them available as well. Thank you everyone for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon. That, this concludes the webinar. Thank you.